Hello and welcome to Story Starters, a series of short creative writing videos for children. My name's Sue Palmer and I write fiction for children and if you've read any of my stories you'll know that my latest project is the Mays Moon Trilogy which tells the story of 13 year old Michael May's dream of becoming the first child astronaut. When I'm not here writing, I run space and creative writing workshops in schools. And in my story starters videos, I'd like to share with you some of my writing tips, some of my methods for creating stories, and in particular, how to develop your characters, a setting for your story, a plot, and the first lines of your story. So if you're a budding writer, or if you've got a project for school and you're after some inspiration, or you just want to do it for fun, why not join me in my Story Starters videos? So today we're going to be talking about your plot. And I'm going to be showing you the importance of planning your story and sharing with you something I use called my plot plan. Now if you've watched the previous story starter sessions you will already have your character, have a picture of your character and know a lot about your character. If you've already looked at your setting you will know where and when your story takes place and you'll probably like me be itching to go with your story. All you're going to need is paper and a pen for this. This is the start, the very beginning of your story. So what do we mean by plot? Well we mean a storyline or a series of interrelated events that make up a story. So why do we need to plan our stories? We could just sit down, if we have our character, and we have our setting, and we have an idea in our head, we could just sit down and write the story. And that's something I've done plenty of times. But what tends to happen, unless you're incredibly lucky, or one of the few people who can write just from their heads, is that you can't hold all the information about your story, and you can't manage your characters and your setting and the series of events effectively if you keep them in your head. And what's happened in the past for me is that I've come up against brick walls where my character has run out of things to do or my character has achieved their goal very, very easily. And it doesn't generally make for very good reading. So with a plot plan, you can work out the whole of your character's journey, what they want to achieve, and what will happen in the end. You can decide where the action of your story begins and it may not begin on the first page, it may begin a little bit further into your book. You can work out how to include tension in your story and at which points. You can figure out the obstacles you want to put in your character's way to make their journey more difficult and the achieving of their goal more exciting. And a plot plan keeps you on track. You can refer to it, just one piece of paper, and see where you are in your story. You can also spot problems. If you run out of things for your character to do, or run out of obstacles, you can go back and adjust it. So your plot plan is just a sheet of paper. It has everything you need on it for the basic story, and it's just a starting point. You can change it as you go along, and I often do, and amend it until you get to the story you want. Once I have an idea for my story, before I even plan it out on my plot plan, I write a one sentence description. And if I can put the whole of my idea into one sentence, and it makes sense, then I know I've got an idea for a story. So for example, with May's Moon, I might have something like Michael May enters a competition 
run by NASA to become the first child astronaut. And just in that sentence, I know what my character's goal is. I know roughly from the description where it's going to be. And because I've put the word competition in there, I know that there are going to be obstacles that come in Michael's way. The next step for me would be to expand that from one sentence into a paragraph that fleshes out a little bit of the detail that may go into my plot plan. So for example, for May's moon again, it may well be Michael May makes it to the children's moon programme where NASA will choose the next child astronaut. Nine other children from across the world have also made it onto the Moon programme, but only one can succeed. Some of them seem to be prepared to do anything to win. And then I would put what happens and the ending of my story in that paragraph, but I'm not going to do that now in case I ruin the story for you. So one sentence to describe your story and then a paragraph to flesh out what your story is about from the beginning through the middle to the end. So just take a few moments to try that out. If you've already got your character and your setting for previous Story Starters videos, brilliant. If not, start with your plot. So one line, then a paragraph and then we'll move on to look at your plot plan. This is the copy of one of my blank plot plan sheets, something I use for all of my stories, which contains for me the key information about my story and where it's going. So let's take a look at it. Along the left-hand side on the vertical axis, you can see the word tension and that describes the rising tension of the story. Most exciting stories have tension that increases and decreases, increases and decreases. And you can see that that happens over the time of the story, which is on the bottom horizontal axis. So as time progresses, the tension generally increases. The bicycle with my character on it at the start is where the action starts of the story. It may start on the first page, but it may be a few pages into your story that the real action starts. And as you can see, the character's journey towards trying to achieve their goal, which is the mountain at the top of the graph, is filled with obstacles which are the meteorites on here, followed by relief or a lull or a bit of calm time before something else happens. And on this particular graph, I have four obstacles, but in your story or in a different story, there could be three or five or seven. It's up to you to decide how many obstacles you want to put in your character's way. But as the character progresses, the obstacles get more difficult, perhaps more frequent. And just as they think they are going to reach their goal, the horrified face in the valley of despair, as you can see on the graph, is where they think they're going to fail. Something happens to stop them succeeding and it all looks a little bit hopeless. But then they rally, they find a way, something happens and they are able to reach their goal. And once they reach the goal and the summit and they've achieved what they set out to do, that's when you tie up all the loose ends of the story, that's the image of the jigsaw, and you answer any questions that you've posed throughout the story. That any questions or little things that you give to your reader, you answer at the end of the story. So in essence, your tension rises over time, your character sets off on a journey that you already know about, they have to overcome obstacles, 
the action starts at an exciting point, which we'll talk about in my next session. And at the end, when they've achieved their goal, you give the reader answers to any outstanding questions. So why not take some time now to fill out your own plot plan? If you'd followed my sessions on character and setting, then you will already know a lot about your character and how he or she will behave in the setting you've chosen with the obstacles you're going to put in their way. So make a few notes on the sheet. If you'd like your own copy, you can download one from my website at www.sypalmer.com and see if you can work out from beginning to end what your story will be. And once you have that, we can then look at the first lines of your story in creating exciting starts, look at some editing to make your work even tighter and your writing even better, and we can look at some finer points of writing including dialogue and showing, not telling. So have fun with your plot plan if you haven't followed the character and setting videos, they're still available online. And have some fun, play around with it and keep asking yourself, what if? And I'll see you next time. Bye.